Hello and welcome to United Nations News by the Universal Versatile Society, casting a bright light on the latest developments from United Nations. Our headlines for today are Deforestation in Brazil and Amazon plummets over 60% since July 2022. The WHO applauds some countries' tobacco control measures, but global risks remain. After Cyclone Mocha, displaced family in Myanmar get ready for the monsoon. UNESCO recommends adding Venice to its heritage danger list. Childcare deficits threaten Asia-Pacific gender equality. UN Women Chief applauds Rwanda's progress on gender equality. Just Transitions form stresses on fair and inclusive transition to a sustainable future. Immediate action needing to avert food crisis in South Sudan. So let's discuss this in more detail. Deforestation in Brazil and Amazon plummets over 60% since July 2022. Deforestation in the Brazilian Amazon has declined by the over 60% in July compared to the same month last year, according to Brazilian Environment Minister Marina Silva. This positive news precedes a regional summit aiming to prevent Bayomi from reaching a critical tipping point. The significant improvement is attributed to political changes under the new administration led by President Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva, penalizing land grabbers and taking action against illegal miners. Silva emphasized the urgency of addressing the climate crisis, proposing an action plan and cooperation among the nine rainforest nations to protect the forest. WHO applauds some countries' tobacco control measures, but global risks remain. The WHO applauded Mauritius and the Netherlands for putting all its UN health agencies and power tobacco control measures into practice. However, the WHO cautions that 8.7 million people die each year from tobacco-related causes, and 2.3 billion people in 44 countries are still unprotected by such measures. Progress is being hampered by the advertising of e-cigarettes as a safer substitute, especially among young people. However, e-cigarettes are as harmful as cigarettes and its nicotine concentration and risk levels are difficult to regulate. To save lives and save health care costs, the WHO implores all countries to keep tobacco reduction priority. After Cyclone Mocha, displaced family in Myanmar get ready for the monsoon. Following the damage brought on by Cyclone Mocha, thousands of displaced residents in Myanmar's Rakhine State are preparing for the monsoon season. In May, a storm struck the shore of Rakhine State, leaving a trail of devastation and putting an additional burden on already precaution populations, including more than 228,000 internally displaced people. While UNHCR and local partners have redoubled their efforts to assist the communities by providing tarpaulins, essential household supplies and repairing communal facilities, more help is required to meet the long-term needs of affected populations. UNESCO recommends adding Venice to its heritage danger list. The United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, has recommended that Venice, one of the most popular and fragile tourist destinations in Italy, be included in its heritage danger list. UNESCO has called upon the Italian government to address persistent and complex issues related to over-tourism, development projects and climate change in Venice. Venice, one of 1,157 places currently designing a World Heritage Site, has been coping with weather-related problems such as extreme drought and flooding in recent years that has been endangering historical treasures and buildings. Childcare deficits threaten Asia-Pacific gender equality. Examining public childcare provision in 48 countries of Asia and the Pacific, a collaborative research conducted by the ILO, the Asian Development Bank and the UNDP highlights that the lack of statutory rights to childcare is a major reason for the absence of childcare systems in the region. Mothers with children aged 0 to 2 are forced to quit their jobs in order to take care of them. Childcare services adapted to the needs of children with disabilities have been especially compromised for low-income rural households. 
the report calls for investments in quality, accessible, affordable childcare providing decent work to care workers. UN Women Chief Applauds Rwanda's progress on gender equality. UN Women Executive Director Sima Bahus represented the UN Secretary General at the Women Deliver 2023 conference held in Rwanda. She met with government officials, civil society members, women's rights activists and partners to strengthen collaboration and mobilize greater action for gender equality and women's empowerment. Ms. Pahus praised Rwanda's leadership in the Technology and Innovation Action Coalition and stressed the importance of achieving ambitious generation equality goals. Ms. Pahus called for stronger policies and workplace practices to promote gender equality and supported the redistribution of unpaid care responsibilities within families. Just Transitions Forum stresses on fair and inclusive transition to a sustainable future. The Just Transitions Forum, hosted by UNFCCC's Standing Committee on Finance in Bangkok, helped to build a common understanding for facilitating and financing energy transition pathways, to stimulate progress towards achieving the Paris Agreement goals, to limit the temperature increase to 1.5 degrees Celsius. The UN Climate Change Executive Secretary remarked that all the economies and sector must be transformed and redirected to a low-carbon and climate-resilient future. Moreover, the transition must be fair, inclusive and just for everyone, leaving no one behind. Immediate action needed to avert food crisis in South Sudan. The UN Food Security Agencies have warned against the deepening humanitarian crisis in South Sudan and have called for immediate action and investment to address food insecurity, climate challenges and conflicts in the region. The director of the General Food and Agriculture Organization highlighted the need for urgent investments and enabling policies to improve longer-term food security, resilience and climate adaptation. Collaboration among the UN agencies and the Sudanese government, along with other local organizations, has helped limit famine in the recent years and has enabled farmers to increase food production and hence income. This was all for today. Stay tuned for our next episode.